Hey there, welcome back to Switched to Linux. This is going to be a uh, tip on how you can do a uh, kind of a de facto but a much safer dual boot on a computer. So we're going to use a basic desktop computer here. Uh, this is just kind of a, a low-end uh, Lenovo computer. It actually serves me very well. I probably only paid a couple hundred bucks for it, but uh, um, natively runs Windows 8.1 and uh, I also run Ubuntu on this, and there is actually another uh, Linux operating system in here, but it's one that I never use. So we're actually gonna take that off. I'm just gonna show you the steps that it takes to get in and uh, and uh, get in here into a computer and just, uh, and just do this. So this is, if you have a desktop computer uh, and you wanna try out Linux, this is the best way of testing out Linux because most of these computers can support at least two hard drives. A hard disk is very cheap. If you need to buy a new one, you can get a good hard disk for a good, you know, 40, 50 bucks, uh, if that. Um, you uh, you uh, end up not messing up any master boot records on your existing operating system. It's kind of the best of every single world. Now, this is not true dual booting because dual booting means that and there's t multiple operating systems, well, dual in case of two operating systems on the same hard drive. One master boot record will control uh, both of those different operating systems. That is actually something that's a little bit more risky. That's more of an advanced uh, situation. And uh, it's not one that I'm going to highly recommend. So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to begin here. The first step is I'm just going to open this guy up so you can see it. I, I could actually kind of skip this step a little bit, uh, but I'm going to do it just for, for the purpose of completion here. And I'm going to do this with hopefully without pulling my microphone out. Uh, I definitely need to get a, a better microphone here. And also, I think yep, I'm going to grab this flashlight in case I need it. So. Uh, a computer is not something that you have to be extremely like, it's not like, you'd have to intentionally do something messy to get in here and break it. Of course, if you're totally uncomfortable, this may not be for you, uh, but we're going to get in here. We're going to, I'm going to show you the wires, just some of the basics. Um, now, first is you frequently see, uh, see some kits and some recommendations of like static guards. The idea is you put a little static bracelet and you ground yourself. That is something that, depending on your environment, you may or may not need to do that. Um, in my case, uh, I, I'm in a very humid cli uh, climate here, so we have almost no static buildup. Now, before I do anything in here, though, I am going to want to ground myself. So I actually have my desk here actually has metal edges. So I'm just going to touch a metal edge before I touch anything to a, in the computer or to the computer. Um, so your basic computer is going to have two or three screws back here, in most cases just two screws. And these are what holds the side panel of the case on. I'm gonna take these two screws out. And then what happens, and you can just inspect your case. Again, this is a Lenovo, most of them are gonna be like this, but every other brand I've seen lately behaves the same way. Now this panel just slides out. So. That's all you need to do to take that out. Now this computer is a little dusty. That's another reason I wanted to, to take it apart. It's been about a year since I cleaned it out and uh, there's actually some, some dust bunnies back here I wanna, I wanna get out. If, uh, particularly if you have pets and I have a couple of cats, um, pet hair can kill computers. So you wanna make sure that you clean your computers out. Um, so you can see here, um, I don't know if you can see it. Actually, yeah, you can see it in <laughs> the video. There's actually a lot of build up there on the fan. So this is the fan that cools the processor. So our processor's here, there's a big heat sink, and then there's a, a fan over here that, that cools that out. Uh, I'll eventually shut the camera off here so uh, uh, just so I can get it cleaned up. So what I have here is I have two hard drives attached. So the top hard drive here is the native hard drive uh, that was inside of the computer. I'm gonna try not to look at you with the light on. <laughs> okay, um, grab the wooden dowel rod here so I can point things out. 
So this guy here, uh, your, your most common type of drive is, is going to be a SATA drive. Uh, and it'll have a cable. The SATA cable is, the in this case, the top one. It's a little bit smaller cable here. And then the other one with the four colors in it, uh, two blacks, a red, and a yellow, this is your power cable coming off of your, uh, coming off of your uh, power supply, which is up here. So the bottom hard drive is actually the one that we're going to be doing the Linux on. And one thing I wanted to do, another reason I wanted to pull this out, is I want to check this hard drive because, as I said, there is a Linux distro installed on this already, but it never worked well. It's very slow. Now, I think it's slow because it's encrypted, but I also think it's possibly possible that this drive is uh, very... Um, uh, I think it's an old drive. I think it's probably very small and probably a slow, uh, slow speed and slow cache. So I just want to have a quick look at it here. Okay, so most of these cases is going to have an extra hard drive uh, slot. So there's your power just slides right on. Your SATA drive slides right on. I have a bigger cable here than I would like. Most of your computers, though, are going to have a couple extra SATA ports, and you can look for them. They're very distinctive. Um, so this guy here is the hard drive. Okay, so this is a Barracuda 7200, so it should have a decent spin code. So I'm thinking the slow speed that I've had on this was due to the fact that the drive was encrypted. And I'm not going to do this as encrypted. This was my first experiment of doing an encrypted um, uh, an encrypted computer to do banking on just for extra security. Um, but I just found that it's way easier and way more convenient to do it on the little thumb drives. And I'll do a tip and trick about that another time. Um, now, as far as this, I'm just going to wipe this drive and uh, install the new new Linux distro on it. Now, the, the other step that we're going to want to do prior to doing this, and this is kind of a security thing to make sure that your, your drive does not get uh, like your original drive. So, so this here, uh, what, now that I pulled this drive out, this computer is exactly stock how I bought it. So this drive here has Windows 8.1 on it. There's never been anything else but 8.1. I'm not going to uh, put anything else on it. Uh, you can actually see there's, uh, there's some labels here. There's a label for HDD1 for the first hard drive, HDD2 for the second hard drive. And these screws were probably screwed in to one of these two slots here, just so that your case actually had the extra screws to, to properly securely mount the hard drive. Um, so I'm actually going to stop the video right now and just kind of clean the computer out. Uh, you don't need to see me do that. And then I'm going to jump back on before we get go ahead and get this guy assembled. Okay, and we are back here. So uh, with this particular case, there is uh, there's some airflow which moves in this general direction here. Um, so there's a fan back here at the top which cools down your your power supply. There's a general one here to pull heat and extract heat out of the, the main case. And then we have this fan here, which uh, just pulls the heat off the processor. So at the front of the computer up here, uh, there is uh, a little uh, uh, kind of a, a grid that collects some dust. So on these computers, there's generally three tabs there. Slide those over, come this way, and then you can clear this whole piece out. Let's see if I have enough distance there to open show you what this looks like on the front so these will just slide out there's just some angle tabs there so I just basically cleared this here it had accumulated a bunch of dust and that's not good for the computer so you should probably clean these out more often than I did here I did this about uh, every six months or so or yeah I forget when the last time was I've been in here but all right so we're gonna close that up to the top uh, now I'm going to um, I'm going to move the camera over here and uh, hopefully it won't come out. Occasionally as I move my camera, it uh, fouls up on me. So I'm going to hopefully do that. I'm just going to show you a couple little things or maybe what I'll do is I'll just get the camera working and then just start the video again from there. Let's see what we can do. All right. Let's see. What can you see? What can you not see? 
Okay, I think with a little light you can probably see well. All right. Let me do, just gonna try and figure out a good way to position some light here for you. I think that's good enough. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to attach um, the second hard drive down in the other bay here. So we're gonna attach it down here. And as we do that, uh, the other thing we are going to do is we're going to dis uh, take, take the first hard drive out. The reason we're going to do this is it's going to make it a whole lot easier for you. So you, A, the master boot record doesn't automatically install to the first hard disk, which it will tr always tend to try to do. And B, it will never mess up this disk at all. I do not want any master boot record here. What we're going to do to run this is we are going to have our main operating system always boot naturally when I turn the computer on. If I happen to want my secondary operating system, we're just going to select it from the bootloader. And what we're going to do now is first, I'm just going to take this drive and plug it uh, into the second bay. So to do that, it'll just slide right in. Again, your computer should have some screws already there. You just want to slide these over until you see your uh, screws lining up. Let's see if I can accomplish this. We'll start it out by hand to just do a brief little uh, tighten over. Oh, lost that one. I'll have to dig that one out in a second. So it is does look like it's going to be difficult to get the rest of these in without the screwdriver, but I can just use the screwdriver to support it. All right. This one here. So this is also the same computer I frequently am running Ubuntu on... Uh, on the back, uh, uh, the background in, in some of my videos. This is the computer that also runs Ubuntu, but that actually runs on an external hard drive. So it's another cool thing about Linux is the portability of it. You can actually run these just fine on an external hard drive. And that external hard drive then will launch other <laughs> systems through, through there. So I'm gonna take, I had a little orange sticky note in there, which was actually the password encryption for the other computer. I know defeats the purpose of encrypting a drive, but uh, okay. So anyway, the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to plug in. I'm going to move this down here so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, we just need to use a power supply. So there's one here's for power. We're going to plug this in, and then up here, I'm going to plug the SATA in. And I'm actually going to just do a quick look. I'm going to see if by odd silly chance there is an IDE port on this thing. There shouldn't be, but I'm just double checking. I've been doing some, some stuff with older computers and uh, I actually have, have some floppy drives and I actually have a, a uh, floppy drive over there, <laughs> which is IDE, but okay. Did not think that would, uh, that would have it. Just wanted to have a quick look. Okay, so, so that I do not mess up my main operating system as I install a new Linux operating system, I'm just going to pull just the SATA port plug on hard drive one. You don't need to pull the power. You can if you want. It doesn't matter. But once this is disconnected, this hard drive, as far as the computer is concerned, doesn't exist. So that's pretty much all I need to do for the initial setup. So the next step is actually going to be putting my, uh, my uh, distro on my um, USB port so that I can um, uh, boot the computer up with, uh, with the operating system. So I'm going to uh, link where you can put the video, uh, link the video where you can learn how to make a USB key, um, but then I'm going to cut the video out now and then we will come back on when this is ready to go. And I will at this point in time also get this computer put back down uh, so I can start uh, installing this. Okay, so uh, I got the computer ready to go and I just kind of put it right over here instead of putting it back down everywhere else. I just needed to run power um, connection to the monitor and I ran internet as well. 
I left everything else uh, everything else out. A couple other little changes that I did make. Uh, I uh, tried to get it back on and do this a little sooner, but I was running into problems where I could not get past that uh, that first continue button on the, the KDE install. Uh, which brings me to the point, I never even talked about what Linux system we're putting on here. Um, I'm putting Linux Mint KDE, and the reason is I'm so used to the Windows type platform that you get with uh, Cinnamon Edition, but I want to experiment with, uh, I really loved some of the things I saw in KDE when I was like, looking at it briefly under the uh, desktop uh, environment system. Uh, but I had some problems with OpenSUSE on the uh, VirtualBox, and I'm sure I could get those resolved. I just don't want to spend the time to do it right now. And I've wanted to put um, a Linux Mint computer into this computer uh, before, uh, you know, before too long. And I don't want to mess with it. I'm sure that the OpenSUSE just, just needs an update or something that, that may or may not just be pushed down. Uh, so we're going to use uh, Linux Mint because I know it works really well. And we're going to use KDE because that's the desktop environment I want to work with uh, more extensively next. So I have my Linux Mint KDE USB key that I burned onto this uh, while I was waiting. The other thing that I had done differently here, um, which was causing a problem, uh, as I had mentioned, and a few other people had mentioned something similar to this in the forums as I was looking this up, um, so, there we are. All right, so hopefully that's not too bright. Um, what we want to do here is um, I wanted to use the, um, just pull the hard drive out of the SATA port one and just run on SATA port two. It turns out that KDE cannot seem to install if SATA one is not the, is not, at least not in the computer. And so what I did is I pulled, this is going to be my SATA 2 where my Linux Mint is going to eventually live. But since Linux Mint's portable, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I just took, pulled my uh, SATA 1 cable from the top hard drive and I just pushed it down to here. And then this ends up allowing us to install. So then what's going to happen is I'm going to run the installation entirely on this drive. And then as our final step, I'm actually going to put this back up on Windows where it should be. I'm going to leave, uh, I'm going to plug this guy or SATA 2 back into this drive here. So then I'll be able to check with my bootloader um, is going to tell me whether I'm going to load into Windows or into Linux and actually my Ubuntu computers right here. So the way I currently have the computer set up before we do any of this is if I want to run Windows, I simply pull this out and the computer automatically boots into Windows just as fast as it ordinarily would. And, you know, it takes the whole whopping, what, two seconds to get into Windows. If I want to run Ubuntu, I just uh, actually, the, the way this sits in my set, setting here, this little hard drive just kind of sits up here. It's actually, there's a, there's a table uh, that the computer sits by. And I just reach over because I had set the computer up so it's really easy to plug things into uh, into the side ports here and into the back ports. I just reach down, plug this guy into the computer, turn it on, it automatically boots here. Because I have my boot order saying first it's going to look for USB drive and then it's going to look at hard drive one, then it's going to look at hard drive two, then it's going to look at the CD drive. Um, but again, you can bypass that, uh, that default order by pushing the F12 key and getting into your boot menu. So what we're going to do here, uh, now that I have that worked out, is we're just going to start by plugging in our USB key and any available port. Um, you can probably see the back easier. I can access the front easier. So I'm just going to plug it into one of my front USB ports, doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to turn on the computer and I'm gonna kind of spam the F12 key until I get the, uh, the bootloader menu up. So let me change this so you can see the screen. Okay, so here you can see that we have the USB legacy, USB uh, UF, uh, UEFI, so this Linux Mint uh, distro gives us both options. It installs both options on here. So whichever is more appropriate. 
in our case, it really doesn't matter. If you're running an older machine that doesn't support uh, UEFI, um, you might run legacy because it's going to kind of run your, your installations based on this. So it doesn't really matter. You can see here that SATA 1 happens to be our hard drive that we're going to install Linux on, and SATA 3 is the DVD drive. So I'm going to load a uh, UEFI uh, USB key here. And then it gives us a screen that uh, asks us how we want to start it. And I'm going to go ahead and push this. And I will be back when this is loaded up. We have booted right up. Uh, you can see it's the Linux Mint over here. If I can get a better view here or not. I'm not sure I can. It looks really nice on my screen. I'm not. I'm seeing probably some glare. It might be some glare from the lamp. Let me see if I can... Uh, do anything about the lighting here real quick. I might be able to. Run this and pull this. Let's see what that does. Uh, it's a little better. I don't think I'm going to get perfect lighting in my situation right here, but I think this, this is decent enough at least. Um, so what we're going to do here is um, we're going to come down here to our menu. It gives us our, uh, this is the menu that I kind of want to run on this system. Hit the install. Just install permanently. Trust me, you can delete it later. <laughs> okay. So here it's going to walk us through our setup screen. Uh, it's selecting our default language. Uh, I'm going to say yes. Um, over here, install third-party software. Yes, I'm going to want to do that. I generally do that. Um, it, it depends. Oh, yeah. Actually, that lighting did make the screen go a little bit better. So now it's going to give us a little spinny wheel here. Let's uh, see. I, I like the color scheme so far. I'm, I'm thinking I'm still going to change it to, to one of the other color screen schemes that I really liked. Um, all right. This machine's firmware has started the installer in UEFI mode, but it looks like there may be an existing operating system already using the BIOS compatibility mode. If you install Debian in UEFI, it might be difficult to reboot the machine in any BIOS mode later. If you wish to install and don't care, keeping the ability to boot one of the existing, you have the option to force that here. If you wish to keep the option to boot an existing operating system, you should not use the installation. So we're going to not want to do that. So that was that little thing that I had mentioned earlier. So what I might want to do is I might want to um, uh, I might want to go back and uh, reboot this into legacy mode. And the 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 conflict here, the the potential challenge is is this going to mess up the secure boot, which is going to prevent Windows 8 or may prevent Windows 8 from booting? Because I don't want to prevent Windows 8 from booting. Um, so let's see, um, I'm going to cancel this and reboot the computer using the legacy mode. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut this, uh, just go ahead and shut down the computer. Um, actually, I, I'm not going to even edit this part out. I think that that's a, a useful explanation to see. I was pretty sure that was going to happen, but I wasn't 100% sure. So we're going to be back in a few minutes. Okay, we are booted back up. We booted this time. The only difference is we went in and booted it off of the USB drive uh, in the legacy mode instead of the UEFI mode. Like I said, I wasn't 100% sure that's exactly what was going to happen, but I was pretty sure. So we're just going to go ahead and start this again. Okay, so no error or warning message or anything there. So in this case here, I don't care about anything on this disk. So um, I'm just going to hit the, uh, let's see. So we can do a logical volume management. We can do encrypted. I don't need to do any of that. We're just going to do, um, uh, do the entire disk here. So we're going to hit the install now button. Okay, this is just giving us the summary of what's going to happen. Uh, basically, it's just uh, telling us how it's going to format and partition the drives. So now we're going to do some basic setup here. 
one of the things I like about the Fedora installation is it starts installing while you're collecting all of this data. Uh, so it actually makes the system seem a little bit better. So now it's keyboard layouts. Yeah, that looks correct. And then username. Go ahead and do that. Pick a username and pick a password. I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to. Okay, I'm just doing, uh, did the password and now I'm just doing the. Um, computer name. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and keep my password to log in. I'm going to go ahead and do that because this is a computer that um, uh, will likely have client data. I'm not going to worry about encrypting, though. Um, uh, what I have found, uh, and actually in the old version of Linux uh, that I had installed on this exact hard drive I'm installing to right now, uh, it was dreadfully slow. And I was thinking it was probably just uh, you know a really slow hard drive, but it's a 7200 RPM, so uh, I'm not sure it's going to be as fast as uh, as other standard modern hard drives. But uh, um, you know we'll see what uh, what happens there as uh, as the day goes on. So here it's just copying files. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, another cutout here, and I'll cut back in when we are ready to go. Okay, so the uh, installation has completed. So it asked us to restart since you know all there was on that screen was, would you like to restart now? So I went ahead and hit the restart button. It uh, gets to the end of it, prompts you to uh, remove the installation medium and then uh, restart. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to hit the restart button And then this should boot us right back into Linux with KDE. And here it is. So hopefully the computer is not slow. It's possible it may be, uh, but uh, we're gonna see how it runs here. I did not just go out and buy a new hard drive for this. Um, I just happened to have uh, a whole bunch of drives laying around for backup purposes. And actually, I don't even know where this one came from, so. <laughs> no, that's if it is slow. That's it's definitely a function of the hard drive, not a function of the uh, not a function of the computer itself. Um, of course, some hard drives, uh, you know, like your typical hard drive right now, pushes data. I believe at like six gig a second, and uh, this one may not. I've never benchmarked it or anything, so it'd be uh, neat to see what it is. It looks like it's running way slower than it needs to, so. I'm not sure if this is going to be a long-term viable solution, but at least it'll give me a, a chance to play with it. But let's see. Maybe that's maybe that's just par for the course. So it wants some updates. I see right there. Um, all right. So we look pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back and so down here I'm going to hit the shutdown. And what we're going to do is we're going to test the um, system, make sure that the Windows 8 still boots regularly, make sure we can get into this operating system, and then make sure the Ubuntu still works. I'm going to turn this on here and rotate this guy back around. So to undo what I had done previously, I'm just going to take my cable for my SATA 1 out of the bottom drive. Oh, there's a little clip, pin pull clip on that. Okay, so I'm going to put that back up into SATA, uh, into the hard drive 1. I'm going to put this guy in back into the hard drive 2. Uh, go ahead and turn on the machine. 
and I'm just gonna see if this should boot right into Windows 8 as I have it right now and I'm not gonna turn over to the screen just because my Windows 8 actually has um, uh, you know has some some uh, personal pictures that I use as my background on that one all right so that lo loaded right on into Windows 8 with no problem at all so we're going to shut down and now to get into uh, Linux Mint here, what I will have to do is this is done. Okay, is now I'm going to. Um, this took a little longer to shut down. I'm seeing if the processors, yeah, the processor is nice and cool. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the F12 key. I'll turn it back around to the monitor. Spam the F12 key. I should see the two hard disks. So here is the uh, hard disk one. And this should hopefully load us into Linux Mint. If it doesn't, then I'm just gonna check the setup to make sure I can boot legacy or not. Um, it should be able to, yep, so there it is, it's going right into Linux Mint. So now this computer will run three different operating systems, all natively, no problems with sharing resources, everything can be saved. The one is just the basic default, nothing plugged in, just push the power button, it goes right into Windows 8.1. Uh, the other one is when I'm using my um, Ubuntu system, I just plug my hard drive in, turn it on, it should go right into there. I didn't test that, but that's uh, just an order in the setup, so that's no big deal there. And then the third one is just pushing the F12 key, and that gets me into my boot menu where I can force it over here. Now, suppose that down the road I'm like, wow, I really want this thing to always be going into... Um, uh, into Linux and I only want to go into Windows 8 by pushing the F12 key then it's a simple matter of going into the setup and changing the order of the boot menu so I can set where which hard drive is going to boot from first it doesn't have to boot from the first hard drive I can boot from the second hard drive first so if I did if I if I get this thing up to be this awesomely good production computer and it runs exactly the way I want it to run, and I really want this thing booting into Linux Mint every day, I might just go ahead and do that. So that's a nice, easy way to make that happen. I'm sorry, the screen's blurry as it's uh, trying to get loaded up here, but uh, uh, hopefully this was a, a great tutorial that if you happen to have a desktop computer, uh, you should be able to test out Linux by just throwing in an extra hard drive, and that's all it takes now we are completely ready to go anything i do on this machine will save so i'm just going to cut out the video now and uh play with my new linux installation for a little bit um of course you can see it's really late by now but uh i'll try and uh, wrap up here uh, in the next half hour so anyway hope that you enjoyed this uh, tip and trick on how to uh, install um uh, Linux onto a desktop computer without messing up your existing operating system. And I really hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.